Hi, my name is Emily Owens, and I'm the Virginia State Director for Science Olympiad. This video will discuss the various tournament day of volunteer roles that we have for our regional and state tournaments each year. You're probably watching this video because you are supporting a student who's on a Science Olympiad team this year. And we ask our competing teams at every tournament to cover volunteer shifts on our tournament days, because without them, these tournaments just can't happen. It takes dozens and dozens of people to make these events run smoothly. And so first I wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for giving your time and considering signing up for volunteer roles for our tournaments. I'm sure your school and students appreciate it, just as we do here at VASO. So just to lay the groundwork of what a tournament day volunteer means, these are not event supervisors. These are not the people who are in charge of running events. We don't ask you to prepare for anything in advance of tournament day. All we need is your help on the day of a tournament and we will have our event supervisors define those roles for you when you arrive. So there's nothing in advance that you have to read or be aware of other than using this video to maybe know a little bit about the particular role that you've signed up for. All of the shifts that are covered under the role of day of tournament volunteers are usually like two and a half to three and a half hours in length. It varies depending on the tournament itself, but these are not full day commitments like our event supervisor roles often are. You're there for a very specific window with a set start and end time. If you're a high school student or you have a high school student living in your home, know that they can volunteer for service hours. We have that option available and they can create volunteer profiles in our volunteer portal as well. But they can only volunteer in select division B events or in a few other general capacities. So those spots are limited that we love to see our high school students giving back to the younger ones in our division B events. Also, if you're volunteering on behalf of a team because you have a student on the team, please know that family members cannot volunteer for an event that their student competes in. So if your student competes in Crime Busters, unfortunately, you can't volunteer to be the Crime Busters assistant proctor, but you can volunteer in any other capacities while at the tournament. The first role that you might see listed on the volunteer portal when signing up for a job are the check-in roles. This is coach check-in, event supervisor check-in, or volunteer check-in. Like I mentioned before, tournaments bring together dozens of people in all of these capacities, and we have to keep track of who has arrived and who hasn't, both to make sure that we've given them the correct materials that they need, but also just in case we have to find someone to remind them of when their shift is starting. Your job is to find their name on a list that we give you for whichever table you are working at and signing up for, we will give you materials that we may have waiting for them. And then also you might be providing them directions on where to go. You're never doing this all on your own. We always have people there at the beginning of a day to orient you, to let you know how this process works for each of those respective divisions, whether it's coach, event supervisor, or volunteers. Often this is giving them a name tag for our event supervisors. It may be giving them shirts and event packets that have test copies in them or score sheets. And then for our coaches might be things like the wristbands that they have to give to team members, um, maps that they might be passing out to parents of their teams, things like that. You're often at the very you know front of the building when people are coming in, they may ask you for directions. Um, and so very visible and you get to engage with a lot of people who are there for the Science Olympia tournament, just like you. The largest category of role that we have would be the assistant proctor. So you'll see that listed um, for many events on a given tournament day. Assistant proctors are the second adults in the room for our closed door events, like our knowledge events, our lab events, you know, things like anatomy, forensics. Um, VASO requires two adults in any closed door event space, right? That's for our student protection. That's for the adult protection. That's for, you know, in case of an emergency, you as an assistant proctor are the second adult. You are supporting the event supervisor. And so the event supervisor will specifically define the tasks that they want you to do for them. But this often includes things like checking student wristbands and materials at the door. They can they have to have you know certain um, team numbers listed on their wristbands at certain times to be able to compete, making sure they have a wristband or they can't compete at all. Um, certain events require certain materials that they're 
allowed to bring in, you know, cheat sheets, or they're specifically not allowed to have certain things. And so your event supervisor would orient you to what those materials might be or how to go about checking wristbands. We may also ha have you proctoring actually during the session itself, like doing a proctor duty, like general monitoring, uh, running, you know, timing stations, if there are stations in the event, running slides, you're going to be doing something like that. But again, the event supervisor will, will define that for you with what's going to work best with how they've decided to run their event. And then at the end of every session, you may be helping them collect papers, uh, resetting lab stations for the next round, right? At many of our tournaments, these events are running for two or three events. So you do have a changeover where it happens again and things might need to be you know, reset, replenish, et cetera. During those second or third sessions of an event, your event supervisor may ask you to take a little bit more of the proctoring on because they might begin grading. And that's totally fine for them to do. And you'll have seen a full session already um, happen to know what's expected. When those sessions are done, whether your event is done after one session, two sessions, or three sessions, you are not required to stay and grade after that session is complete. You absolutely can if you want. Your event supervisor would love that. But just know that your commitment of time is simply the start and end times listed when you sign up for that shift. Anything beyond that would just be, you know, out of the goodness of your heart if you have the time available, but it's certainly not expected. The next category of role that you may see would be things that include the words impound, spotters, timers, um, or, you know, assistant, but it's for a build event and it doesn't say proctor. Our build events require a variety of different types of support for our event supervisors since they're not a traditional like test-based event, um, like those closed door ones that assistant proctors might be in. So just like in that one though, you're gonna have your event supervisors giving you the, the actual details of what your task will be, but to define a little bit for you of what those might look like. If the sign up is says impound, this means it's it's at the beginning of the day. That should align with the time that you see of the session. And it's the time when students submit their devices to be held until competition begins. There's usually a window of time, whether it's half an hour to an hour, where for certain events, students have to bring in those devices. And so that means there's a lot of people, uh, papers, the devices themselves, all needing to be organized. Some things need to be measured. Your event supervisor will train you on whatever task they need you to do in that time. Um, but it's really helpful for those supervisors to have those extra, extra hands. If it says spotters or timers, well, the name kind of tells you what they're doing, right? Uh, if it, a spotter might be for something like air trajectory where you're watching something get launched and you're spotting where it lands. Or timers, there are some events that have a time-based component and you would be running the timer. And the specifics, once again, the event supervisors would tell you, you know, are you timing a run on something? Are you keeping track of time as it's ticking down to inform participants? But our event supervisors, you know, can't split their brain four different ways and try to tackle all of that. So those events need a lot of support. And those events are really, really fun to be a part of, especially because you're getting to uh, watch all those devices um, run. And those are in public facing events, often, not always, but most of the time, meaning that you'll see you know, crowds of people also coming to watch the events in contrast to the closed door ones where you and the event supervisor are the only adults in the room. We have a number of hospitality roles. Our event supervisors are working the whole day until their event scoring is done. And so we feel like it's only right to provide them a little bit of sustenance. Um, so if you sign up for a hospitality role, this involves setting up coffee, snacks in the morning, and then keeping those refilled and refreshed um, throughout the day. Tournament sites provide all of the food, the beverages, the materials. So you're just there to staff it um, and keep our event supervisors going. If your hospitality shift happens during the lunch block, this shift might also include organizing lunch orders, distributing them to event supervisors as they come in. And then for some of our event supervisors, they require their meals to be delivered to them because they're like running a build event all day um, and can't get away to go pick up their food. Finally, our last category of uh, volunteers 
would be our score room and math check. So score room and grading area, that's where our event supervisors are going to go at the end of their sessions to finish grading. And then they submit their scores to us when they're done. Depending on how they've been grading, whether they've, you know, started with one particular question that they grade across all tests or a certain section, they might be able to use your help on the actual scoring, but they might not. And so you shouldn't take that personally. The, the biggest role of um, the score room math check is actually the math check part. That's where most of um, the help is really needed. When I say math check, I mean, you're adding up the points on the tests again to be able to check the supervisor's addition because they've had a really long day. Uh, you know, they've graded all their responses for, you know, content and correctness, but sometimes the little things, right? Like adding stuff up, um, then kind of slip our minds. So this is definitely the easiest and most common error. And so we're not asking you to evaluate any of the responses on the test. It's literally just adding up the points on the pages to make sure that they total correctly before we put them into our scoring system. For some events, they use a spreadsheet to score. So we do transcription checks. Um, a lot of these are build events or hybrid events. And so we're asking you to help confirm that the numbers that they wrote down on the papers are entered in correctly to the spreadsheet, um, that we're not missing a decimal or accidentally typing a seven instead of a six, just to make sure that at the end of the day, we can feel really good that our scores are valid. So I'll say it again. Thank you so, so much for giving your time to VASO, to these competitions. They do not happen without volunteers like you. And we look forward to seeing you on tournament day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our social media and follow us on all of these platforms.